morning, Sunrise. Good morning. It's good to be together today. I'm so glad to see your smiling faces. We have communion available after the service right here. We'd love for you to come take some communion, have some time for some personal prayer and reflection. Right now, I'm going to invite you to get on your feet, and we're going to do something that we haven't done in a while, and this is going to be a little out of the box. You ready for it? Can you not hear me? No. That's probably because I forgot to turn on my mic. Can you hear me now? Okay. So, did you hear anything I said? No. Let's start with Good Morning Sunrise. It is good to be together today. We have communion available after the service right here, and we would like to invite you to partake in that. And right now we're going to get on our feet and we're going to do something a little bit different today that we haven't done in a while. Can you handle doing something different? No. All right. Are you ready for it? I'd like you to say good morning to those around you. I'm throwing some changes at you, and I know how much people love change, right? Or do you just look forward to something that's different, and you look forward to a change because it just makes you feel really comfortable? There's a, there's a very awkward silence in the room. That's great. So the last song we're going to sing in just a moment is, is a new song to most of you, almost all of you, and I want to invite you to do your best, sing along. We're going to learn something together. As I often say to my 14-year-old, it's difficult until it's not, and then once it's not, it's never difficult again. And that's something that I try to listen to myself at times, because there's the things that we know to say, but we don't always listen to. Can I get an amen? amen. All right. So, would you join me in our opening response? Who are we gathered here this morning? We are people of sunrise. And what is God's goal for each of us? To become holy. Good. Let Sunrise people worship God.
All God's people said, amen. Children, come on up. Everybody else, grab a seat. Come on up, guys. Come on up. All right. How you doing today? Good? Come on up, guys. Ooh, I like that. Question. What is your favorite thing to drink when you get really thirsty? What's your favorite? Water. I love that answer. What's your favorite? Water? Water. 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 Water, you guys are so smart. You know, I asked the adults, uh, I thought about asking the adults at 8.30, and I changed my mind at 9 o'clock, I mean, not 8.30, but some of them thought coffee. Do you think coffee is really good for you? No, it tastes good, but it, oh, not to you guys yet, huh? Well, thinking about water, I brought some stuff today. So if you're thirsty, you have to have something to put it in, right? But I was having a hard time deciding which one I want. So I like this one. See, it's got a straw. I like the red. You know, most people know I was born in Nebraska. It's a curse. We love red. All right. I like this one because if I exercise or I go running, I've got a little finger I can put it in and I can run with it. And it opens up really nice. That's cool, huh? And then I like this one because the ice will never melt. I think it keeps ice for like 20 years. It's really good. I like cold water. Then I have this one, and this one is my daughter's favorite. Why do you think it's her favorite? Pink, Pink right? It's fabulous. And it's got a nice little grip. It's wonderful. It's got a cute little cup. But let me show you this one. Oh, my goodness. Are you ready for this? Watch How cool is that? See, you push the button. I love that. This is fun to drink water out of, right? So what is that? Yes, what were you going to say, Garrett? Oh, I have one like that, but it has a lock. Oh, it has a lock? So tell me, what's this, what, what can we put in all of these? Water. Water, right? So even though they all look really different, if we have healthy, clean water in there, then it doesn't matter, right? As long as they're clean. It, it doesn't matter. And you know what? how that's like us? Why? In Sunday school today, we're learning about a lady who comes to a well, and Jesus tells her about the water of life that he can offer. So we're going to learn more about that in Sunday school, and we're going to remember that no matter how we look on the outside, it doesn't really matter, right? Because if we're filled with the living water of Jesus, if we learn about Jesus and we read our Bible, we're all healthy on the inside, right? Mm -hmm. All right, will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for our Savior Jesus. Thank you that his water will help us. Please help us to share his message and love to all around us. Thank you for your love. Amen. Let's go to Sunday school.
Oh, as we prepare for a time of prayer together, we're going to sing together. And we're going to sing a song called Dona Nobis Pachem. And if you have ever sung that song, raise your hand. Dona Nobis Pachem. So there's a few that didn't put their hands up. What that means is grant us peace. Grant us peace. So we're going to sing all the way through the song together, and then we're going to sing it in a round. And there'll be three groups, and we'll do group one on the outer sections. We'll do group two on this section here, and group three will be this section here. And you're just going to start from the top of the song, and we're going to sing it in a round. So let's sing it all the way through together first. <laughs> that in a round together and the choir and orchestra are divided up into groups to help you out. Here we go again from the top. The first group. God's beloved, let us pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord of light and love, we thank you for this chance to pray together. And in this moment now, we take a time of silence to present our prayers, our requests, our concerns, and our confessions to you. For this chance to pray together, to worship together, and to hear your word. We come together to celebrate you and all the workings that you do in our lives. We pray for all the churches that must celebrate underground. Strengthen them as they face persecution for believing in you. As they pray, they are prayed upon by those that mean them harm. May we learn a zeal for you from our persevering brothers and sisters in other lands. We lift them up, we pray for them, we celebrate their faithfulness, and we join your believers everywhere in praying the words you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. One of the ways that we can remain connected is through our offering. 
You can text a gift to 719-270-4478 or mail in a gift to Sunrise UMC or you can drop off a gift as you leave the building today in our Josh box. But again, that text to give number is 719-270-4478. Thank you. That song that we learned together that was new today <clears throat> was titled May the Peoples Praise You and that was written by Keith and Kristen Getty, musicians from Ireland. And now we're going to sing another tune by Keith and Kristen called He Will Hold Me Fast. And we welcome Katie as our soloist who will be playing the role of Kristen Getty today. <laughs>
church said amen. amen. Uh -huh. Are we blessed by our orchestra and choir? Yes. Welcome back. Welcome back. We received news this morning that our longtime member Lyle Haller died last night, and our prayers are with his family, especially his wife, Pammy, and we uh, pray for them as they will uh, venture through this time of grief. <clears throat> Also, um, last week this time, I was blowing bubbles in a pool at a hotel with my granddaughter and, uh, in Wichita, Kansas, and there was nothing better than that moment of uh, uh, celebrating uh, the baptismal waters with the granddaughter. It's just a cool thing. So uh, the uh, other thing I was aware of is as I watched the live stream and knowing that in the live stream there are things that are happening as well and i became aware that last week we celebrated with the faith of mustard seed our powerful volunteers of miss jen miss sarah and miss gwyneth uh, our children's ministries uh, are supported by them and they carried us through the pandemic for our children and families, and we are so grateful to them. I also wanted to acknowledge that I thank God Almighty for Miss Lacey, our children's director. Uh, I thank God Almighty for Miss Gabby, our student uh, ministries director, and I thank God Almighty for Miss Brittany, our director of the preschool. And they too actively worked hard during the pandemic as they uh, were present for families and children through it all. God bless them, and we are grateful to have them uh, leading us and guiding our families here at Sunrise. We are uh, eager to hear the word of the Lord, and we're blessed today as Taylor it will read the scriptures for the last time in a while, for she is about to embark on her college adventure and uh, heads out uh, this week to start. This is my last week. This is your last week. Yeah. So uh, thank you for uh, reading the scriptures faithfully for us. Uh, we do expect you to come back uh, on holiday and uh, we'll make arrangements for you to have the microphone. Uh, we can. Uh, let us pray. Well, Lord our God, open our hearts and open our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as Taylor reads our scriptures and your word is proclaimed, we can hear with joy what it is you have to say to us today. Amen. Our scripture today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 15. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. And from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, the first two verses. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of the unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Uh -huh. There's more than one way to spell pray. P-R-A-Y and P-R-E-Y. Absolutely. And as there's more than one way to spell this word, we continue a series where we're uh, awakening our own faith as we know that there are words that we say and use, but they can be spelled different and they mean very different things. And it's important for us to know the difference. It's important for us to explore these differences in a way that can help us continue to grow and flourish as the people of God in this world. Today, we explore these two words, pray, P 
P-R-A-Y, and pray, P-R-E-Y. Remember with me, to pray, P-R-A-Y, is a conversation with God, simply stated. To pray, P-R-E-Y, as some people of faith use the word, it's to offer predatory faith with our own interests in mind. To pray, P-R-A-Y, is to discover teaching us, Jesus teaching us to pray. You heard the scripture. Taylor read it from Luke chapter 11. We heard that uh, the people said, Lord, teach us to pray. And he said, well, when you pray, pray, Abba, Daddy, Father, it's translated, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Let, let what you envision our world to be happen. Lord, give us today daily bread. Lord, forgive our sins. Lord, watch over us while we forgive everyone who's indebted to us. Lord, watch over us and don't bring us into a time of trial. When we ask the Lord to teach us to pray, P-R-A-Y, we are taught. But then there's to pray, P-R-E-Y, and that's to understand this intensity of the chief priests, the scribes, and the Pharisees. We heard from both the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Mark how the Pharisees plotted to entrap Jesus. They prayed, P-R-E-Y, upon him. And the chief priests and the scribes They were looking with stealth for ways to kill Jesus. People of faith prey upon others. We'll talk more about predatory spirituality in a moment. But for now, pray, P-R-A-Y, to converse with God, the, the finest of what our relationship building with our Lord is all about. I don't know about you, but when I'm in a relationship with somebody, it's a lot easier when we exchange a conversation. There's talking and listening. There's back and forth. There's mutual give and take. And sometimes when we pray, it's hard to feel the beauty of what an interchange, the give and take is about. There are times when people will come to me and they'll share with me, The Lord spoke to me last night, and often my response is, oh, really? And then it's, oh, really? What did the Lord share with you? Some are able to hear the Lord in ways that some of the rest of us do not. But we do know that there is interchange, there is dialogue. It's not a monologue of us talking to God alone. There is a conversation, there's dialogue, there's collaboration with our God. I'm often reminded that one of the best traditions in our Christian faith is through the church year, we discover that during the month of December, we get to do Advent, which is a big word for the idea that Jesus is coming into the world. And we celebrate Jesus coming to the world as Emmanuel, God with us. The gospel of Matthew and the gospel of Luke proclaim the infant Lord coming into our lives. Emmanuel. And I've long been influenced by the coaching that when we pray, perhaps our prayers need to be to Emmanuel. And when we're dialoguing with our God, it's more like an exchange with an infant. And how we do converse with an infant. We do converse with our God knowing that the ways of our Lord communicating back to us are not the ways that we often take for granted in our prayers. Often our prayers are based on God, the the cosmic wizard of Oz, the cosmic vending machine in the sky, that if we pray appropriately and if we are faithful enough, the desires that we have and the wishes we approach our God with will come to us. That um, the presence of God uh, will be revealed and our wishes can come true. Perhaps our 
conversation with our God can grow. I'm indebted to a mentor, her name Donna Bischoff. Donna and her husband John rode on horseback into the Appalachian backcountry and they became missionaries in a long time ago. They set up their missionary field in the poverty pockets of the hollers and the, the backwoods of the Appalachian Hills. And Donna would often share as she witnessed to her faith that we have to pray as though God alone is responsible for everything that happens and needs our prayers to make it so. And we have to live as though God needs only us to make certain those things happen. She lived the reality of making sure that when there was prayers for the poor, she was at the front lines of making that happen. She offered her life in the witness. I hear the wisdom of her thoughts, that we pray to God as though God is responsible for it all, but we have to live as though we are God's hands accomplishing it. The Reverend Mike Slaughter talks about miracles in this world, and so often we pray for miracles to happen. He said, for every, every miracle has two parts, divine intervention and human initiative. God's activity and our activity with God. And that is what produces the miracles of God's activity in our world. I admire his coaching and working with us. To pray is to be in relationship with God. As we open the scriptures, we learn uh, of six and more types of prayer. They come to us with proper nouns, blessing, petition intercession, confession, thanksgiving, and praise. Big words, but all of it is to prompt us to know that when we're honest before our God, all our thoughts are surrounded by God's presence. That we don't need to measure them. We need, don't need to use big words to, to be in conversation with our God. Ours as a spiritual people is to pray, P-R-A-Y, with our God. Any questions? Pray. We do. We honor our God in our conversation. And now, let's take a look at this word, pray, P-R-E-Y, predatory spirituality. Somehow, there are times when our faith becomes weaponized And we use our faith as a way to achieve our own selfish goals and and impose upon others our desires, our ways. Humor me for a moment. I'm going to share a video as you're preparing it. I want you to listen for what can happen as we perhaps misunderstand what it means to pray. I haven't been to church since I don't remember when Things were going great till they fell apart again So I listened to the preacher as he told me what to do He said you can't go hating others who have done wrong to you Sometimes we get angry but we must not condemn let the good Lord do his job and you just pray for them I pray your brakes go out running down a hill I pray a flower pot falls from a windowsill and knocks you in the head like I'd like to I pray your birthday comes and nobody calls I pray you're flying high Stars, I pray all your dreams never come true. Just know wherever you are, honey, I pray for you. I'm really glad I found my way to church. (laughs) 
you, you caught it. There, there's this moment, I'm going to pray for you. I, uh, I pray your brakes go out running down a hill. I pray a flower pot falls from a windowsill and knocks you in the head like I'd like to. I pray your birthday comes and nobody calls. I pray you're flying high when your engine stalls. I pray all your dreams never come true. Just know wherever you are, honey, I pray for you. <laughs> uh, when we're honest, we know that we have some times when we pray, P-R-E-Y, because we're human beings. And it's real. But when you hear the preacher and what he really said, or she said, you can't go hating others, those who've done wrong to you. Sometimes we get angry, but we must not condemn. Let the good Lord do his job. <laughs> Just pray for them. <laughs> It's so easy to slip into P-R-E-Y, our predatory faith and spirituality that says our agenda needs to rule and reign. Thanks for your willingness to hear the point in playfulness. But we know it's real and grounded in the fact that there are times when our prayers turn into predatory spirituality and we become ones who pray to God with our blame and our shame we find that our prayers are wrapped up in the conflict that we are experiencing with others. And we find ourselves wrapped up in our own judgments and our own biases. And we can't let that go very easily. And it becomes so very real. A few years ago, we studied a book called Peacemaker. And in that book, there was a diagram of what happens to us when we find ourselves in conflict. And in conflict, there is a wheel of how we make resolutions in our conflict and at one point on the conflict wheel there's this idea that uh, when someone is disagreeing with us they become dead to us and in the most extreme cases we use murder to resolve our conflicts and on the other end of this conflict resolution wheel there's the place where we become insignificant in extreme moments we even commit suicide. Our, our thoughts and our identity is no way worthy to participate in a conflict. Both are not the ways to resolve conflict. In the book, there were eight different ways to understand that there are God's ways of helping us lean and listen to one another and pay attention. That we can find ways to to honor and respect one another more fully. Friends, predatory spirituality when we're in disagreement or when we don't understand is not the pathway for when we pray. There's more than one way to spell pray. As people of faith, we lean in to pray in a way that offers the finest of our relationship with God and our coaching from Jesus Christ himself. Now, granted, there are times I've overstated this predatory understanding of prey. There is also a moment in a parable when Jesus is talking to us that he shares that there is the tenacious widow before an unjust judge. And every morning she approaches the door of the judge and says, please listen to my grievance. And the judge continually says no. But eventually the judge grows weary. And because this widow keeps bothering him, he says, I will grant her justice so, so that she will not wear me out by continually coming to my door. There is that praying upon the unjust judge for reconciliation. And Jesus concludes the parable by saying, listen to what the unjust judge says and do not 
uh, misunderstand that God will grant justice when we are persistent. So it is that there are times when we sort through our faith and our values and listen to the way Jesus teaches us to be the ones who pray in our world for the best of the coming of the kingdom of God, for the best of daily, daily bread, for the best of what it means for us to know that sins can be forgiven. And we ourselves are the ones that model what that means. And that these times of trial, we will not be abandoned. We pray into our world. Finally, let me share the wisdom of the old Cherokee grandfather elder who's sitting with his grandchild and he says, a fight is going on inside of me. There are two wolves and they are fighting with each other. One wolf is evil. He's angry envious, sorrowful. He's filled with regret and greed and arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. And grandson, the other wolf that fights is good. He is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, compassion, and faith. The same fight, grandson, is going on in you, as is the same fight in everyone. Grandfather and grandson sit in silence until the grandson breaks the silence by saying, which wolf will win? Grandfather, which wolf will win? Some know the answer. The grandfather says, the one you feed. The one you feed. We know the difference in the spelling of the word pray. Let us be the finest example by God's grace and mercy in all that we do, in all that we say, in every moment that we encounter another living being. Here again, when we cry out to Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. Pray then, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. We've heard the words of the Lord today. Amen and amen. As our music team comes, we'll prepare to sing Sweet Hour of Prayer, Sweet Hour of Prayer. That lyric is one that comes to us as we know that this sanctuary is holy ground. We come in here to be in prayer, to be in the place where P-R-A-Y, this sanctuary is exempt from the chaos of the world. And for a moment, in a sweet hour, we pray and are in relationship with the Lord God Almighty. Let it be so. Let it be so. Amen. Let us stand and sing together.
hast escaped the tempest there by thy return, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, the joys I feel, the bliss I share of those whose anxious spirits burn with strong desires for love and such I hasten to the place where God my Savior shows his face and gladly take my station there and wait for the sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, thy wings shall my petition bear, and him whose truth and faithfulness engages the waiting soul. Cast on him my every care and wait for these sweet hour of prayer. This has been a sweet hour of prayer. When we leave this place, we're going to have the opportunity to be in prayer rather quickly. You know that there'll be a moment as you drive out of our parking lot that someone in another vehicle will cut you off. And you'll have the opportunity to pray for them. What will be your prayer? And how will you spell pray? I pray that you will offer a prayer of compassion, of mercy, and of grace. Rather than a predatory prayer of judgment and annihilation. We laugh because we know the truth of our spiritual walk and the responsibility when we step through the doors. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be among us and those we love always. Amen and amen.